Right, welcome back and uh, indeed God bless the souls of our martyrs and all those people who sacrificed their own uh, souls and uh, all the efforts that were made at that very glorious period uh, of our uh, life. Um, not all of us have lived those moments, but we learned to hear ever since those uh, very precious days in our, uh, in our uh, life or the, in the life of Egypt's history. Again, let me welcome our uh, distinguished guest, Major General Mohammed Shahawi, Chemical Warfare Advisor in the CSC. Again, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, good evening. Good evening to you. And um, let me start with, I guess, uh, um, uh, a question that everybody wants to understand. What were the reasons that contributed to winning this war at this very particular time? Yes, Ferris is such an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be interviewed in the new program, the so Daily much. Debate. And I want to say that in the 49th anniversary of this glorious October war, we salute our souls of our righteous martyrs who have given their pure blood to restore the dignity and to have the land of Sinai. And uh, the Egyptian army outdoes or defeat Israel by our will, determination, morale, and the uh, leadership and the good leadership of the Egyptian armed forces. Uh, second thing I want to say that is uh, Egypt liberate its land occupied by Israel in 1967 by all means of struggles. Uh, the str of armed struggles in October war and the attrition war and also by diplomatic means and political means uh, uh, and until we restore all Sinai on 25th of April 1982 and by international attritions uh, by, uh, uh, to restore Taba, which it was one kilometer only and for that reason so we many, many, uh, all kinds of means we restore this uh, Sinai. And also I want to say that uh, the librations of the last spot of Sinai, which it was Taba, this is give us a lesson that we keep our, our land and we don't let any span of land or any small part of it to anyone. So we restore our land, our dignity, and we keep our national security, Egyptian or national security, but also Arab national security. For that reasons, I think there was a spirit for October war. This spirit is high moral, determination, will to defeat the Israel's enemy. For that reasons, now we celebrate by the 49th anniversary of this October war. Today, 10th of Ramadan, it was a sign for dignity, for the strength, for the powerful of not only the Egyptian armed forces, but also the Egyptian people, because they uh, stand one line behind the Egyptian army. Indeed. And in that, uh, in that uh, uh, big war or, or this victory, uh, that determined our uh, history uh, from that uh, time on, there were some very particular issues that we really want to understand, or I guess our audience would really want to understand. First, as uh, we spoke before, uh, the, uh, before the, uh, the, this episode, and the genuine choice of the zero uh, oh. hour timing. Yes, this very important question to shed a light here about the genius choosing of zero hour. Why 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. 
in the 6th of October. Why October and why 6th of October and why 2 o'clock to start the uh, operational or the operation for that war? I think we, there are many studies, studies for the theater of the war, uh, studies about our capabilities of the Egyptian armed forces oh. and also about the capabilities of Israeli army. We know about their strength and their weakness, oh. their uh, uh, strength to uh, neutral it and their weakness to put a force and to defeat them. And also about the Suez Canal, about the speed and directions of the current and high tide and low tide, and also the length of the, of the night. Because we want uh, the night, it is too long, 12 hours, and half of this night was, uh, it has a moonlight, and the second it has dark. The moonlight to eradicate, to establish, to carry out the bridges, and we need the darkness to hide our uh, vehicles and our tanks when they crossing the canals on these bridges. For that reason, so we studied a lot of things to, uh, uh, to choose the month of October because also you know that October war was the cooperations between Egypt and Syria against the Israeli enemy. Indeed. Uh, in December and November, there is an ice in Syria. So we choose in uh, autumn, in October, because the theaters of Syria was a mild, not uh, a very cold, and also it covered with ice. Second thing, October war is coincides with, with uh, Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And this is gives uh, deceptions, uh, strategic deceptions, because Israel knows that uh, Ramadan for Muslims was a month of laziness. So this was a big strategic deception and a part of deception plan for them. Also, uh, October month was crowded with three big feasts of Israel. Uh, al Ghufran uh, feasts and the Taurat, Taurat uh, feasts. And in these feasts in Israel, the, they stay at homes, not go outside. But some, people, some of them, they can't eat food or drink in this day. And this helps us. And it is uh, some complexes for the mobilization plan for Israeli forces because this uh, this uh, feast is, it was a, a holiday for them, and they can make mobilization plan. This is why we choose about October, the month of October. But why 6th of October, not 7th of October? The army forces choose uh, the day is uh, 6th of October because it coincides with the Saturday. Mm -hmm. And Saturday also is considered as one of the holy day yes. in Israel. And in this day, it was found the difference between high tide and low tide in the Suez Canal was low. Because to help us, when the boats, the rubber boats in the, in the first waves, it helped us in making this mission. And also, it coincided with the 10th of Ramadan, and the night in tents of Ramadan, like, like today, it has a long time of, of night. We have 12 hours night in tents. For that, for that reason, it consists of the tents of, uh, of Ramadan. Also, the last thing of why do we choose 6th of October oh. as a day for starting this glorious uh, war, this glorious October war, it consists with Yom Kippur feasts. Where life in Israel stops completely. And this helps us in, uh, and it doesn't help them in mobilizations 
operation. But the most important thing here is about why we do choose the 2 o'clock, 2 p.m., not the first light at 6 a.m. or last night uh, uh, at 6 p.m. We choose to. Why to? Because the first, the first point here, the sun is behind our pilots and in front of eyes of the Israeli pilot. So it can hinder them to clarify, to see our forces in the western bank of the canal, the number mm. one, about the sun mm. in, the, in the eyes of the pilots uh, of Israeli pilot. The second point is to achieve surprise. As the armies started their operations, their wars, in the, first, in the first time, in the first day, in the first light, or the last ones. At 6 a.m. or 6 p.m.? No, we choose two. Neither dusk nor dawn. Yes. Indeed. The second uh, point here, why do we choose 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Giving the opportunity four hours. How many of this? This four. Those are four. Yes, five there. They are five. Yes, now we are four. We don't mix that like that. Of course so, we don't. Of course, of course <laughs> not. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. So here, uh, giving the opportunity, four hours to our forces before dark. Because we know that the dark comes at 6 o'clock p.m., 6 p.m. So we have four hours to achieve the blue of frustrations before Israeli ability to respond in the morning. And mm -hmm. the last thing, for why do we choose 2 o'clock in the afternoon? That the timing of the change of the Israeli combat crew, they change the shift at 2. So when they leaving, they don't be able to come again because our artillery and our air force make what we call about the preparation and they launch their uh, bombardment on the Berlin line. So I think uh, this is the genius or the genius choosing of zero hours. Why 73? Why October war? Why 6 of October, the 6th of October, and why 2 o'clock in the afternoon? I think this is a miracle. Yes, I guess, is, uh, I guess the genius. timing in itself yes. is, is very genuine, very indeed. If we speak about the, uh, the, the features of the strategic plan itself. Also, this is uh, uh, a lesson, this is a big lesson, that until now, all the academic, military academic, and the institution all over the world, they study about the strategic deception plan. The strategic deception plan by uh, Anwar Sadat and by the uh, operations of the, our armed command of our forces, they first, they mention in the newspaper and the international newspaper that we will not fight Israel, and we will stay as, as it is. We will not fight, because our economy is weak, and the, we don't make our uh, forces and train them good. And to we did not prepare them for a real fight prepare, war. Prepare, yes. And don't enhance our capability, uh, armed capability. We mentioned that all over the world, the first one. So media make, role. To make media uh, role a deception. Of, of deception. Yes. Uh, the, uh... Number two. Mm. Announcing in the international newspapers and here in Egypt like Ahram, because Ahram is uh, internationally... Uh, widely spread, yes, yes indeed. Why, why mm. spread in all, over, in all over the world. We announce that we will organize what we call about Umrah, Rituals in Ramadan for our officers and the non-commissioned officers. So 
win officers and non-commissioned officers and the soldiers, they will go to make um, Umrah. This means that they will not fight. Mm. They, they will not fight Israel. And this is the second pillar or the second point for the deception pillar. Number three, announcing in the newspaper also that uh, visit a very important uh, figures, that is what we call Romanian defense uh, uh, minister, mm. Cornel Lomanescu, that he will visit Egypt in what? On 8th of October. So another ministry of defense of Romanian, they will come to Egypt to visit Egypt on 8th. So An they will visit. not fight on 6th of October. Also, the expulsion, and this is a very important point, the expulsion of, so of Soviet expert from Egypt and they let them remain in Syria. So that, this gives what we call a misery or mystery about the lack of coordination between Egypt and Syria because the Soviet Union expelled from Egypt, Egypt but not and in, remain in, the, in, the, on the in the Syria. Threat. So mm. they give what we call about a mystery about mm. the lack of coordination. And also, and very, very many times, many times we announce that we have general mobilizations to make what we call about exercises. More than once. And after the exercise, they go to their barracks, one, and they don't carry out any uh, combat. Uh, operations against Israel. This is more than one time. So when we make the final mobilization and we, what we call, make this glorious war. We, so we deceit and make deception about that. Mm. Uh, the uh, access about that or the point about that, the mobilizations of 20,000 soldiers they left the armed forces before the war, and, and now things this in all newspapers that we demobilized, we, uh, they led the armed forces, 20,000 soldiers from the Egyptian armed forces. Mm. And this gives a message, a big message to Israel that we will not fight. Also here, civilian workers, mm. civilian workers continued their unusual work to construct terraces and raising the burn even hours before the start of the attack. You know that we have a burn uh, 22 meters high and we raise about the sand to elevate it until before uh, just uh, maybe minutes before the war, the civilian and the military persons, they can work and they can make what we call about usual, usual walks. They can stay lazy on the canal. They can what about sugar cane. They can what eat or uh, what we call about sugar cane. He can uh, yes. not eat. Um, of course. Of course. Um, well, I don't know how we, <laughs> we do that because not all the oh, world have sugar cane. cane and they don't use The soldiers, <laughs> they can eat sugar cane before the war. And this make a deception for the Israeli so they, people. they are just at rest. They, they, yes. They are just at rest. Yes. And they are not a trick, uh, a trick for them. Of and course. also they can playing, they can washing their clothes, they can what we call about sugar cane, they can uh, we will know about uh, uh, absorb. Yes, absorb sugar cane, absorb. We do. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, I want to say that soldiers in the front. Uh, bosses, as they say, they can doing their uh, usual works. Yes. And uh, choosing the zero hours, as we said before. Before we move on with our next point, but let me here take this and from those glorious moments to other glorious moments we are living in. Uh, in those, uh, in this very particular uh, stage of our life, and from a first crossing to a second crossing to this third one towards development and Egyptian mega projects, a path to sustainable development. Let's watch. In conjunction with the current Egyptian sustainable and economic reform plan to enrich the Egyptian resources and face future challenges, 
Mega projects have been pursued to improve the infrastructure and encourage investments. Moving towards achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and to make Egypt a competitor country that attracts foreign investments, Egypt has started setting developed plans of constructing mega infrastructure projects, adoption of an open market policy and easing regulations and hurdles for foreign investors. As for renewable energy projects, Egypt's categorized the electricity and power demand as a national security demand and adopted an immediate plan to increase the capacity of the national electricity grid and provide needed power to all sectors. An overall budget of 515 billion Egyptian pounds was allocated for improving electricity sector, including generation, support, the transmission network, and upgrade the distribution network. To reach the 2022 goal of having 20% of the total electricity grid from renewable resources, the largest solar complex in the world is being constructed in Bin Ben village located in Aswan Governorate. The Bin Ben solar power plant will support the implementation of the plan for achieving self-sufficiency for generating electricity in the next decades. From another perspective, that would also support a more sustainable environment by limiting the polluting traditional source of power, fossil fuels. Construction of new roads, upgrading transportation systems are mega projects that contribute to sustainable development. Many bridges and tunnels have been constructed over the past few years all over Egypt to connect the main Egyptian cities supporting internal trade lines and encouraging foreign investment opportunities. The new Rod al Farag Bridge is the new life artery for Egyptian prosperity as it connects Greater Cairo metropolitan area from its far east, Nasser City, to its west, October City, and continues to reach Cairo Alexandria Desert Road. Also, the construction of the new fourth generation cities has become a necessity as Egyptian populations are living in just 7% of the total area of Egypt. Therefore, Today is the day for constructing mega projects that will improve the country's infrastructure and achieve its future ambitious goals as well as supporting a stable environment for investments in Egypt. Meanwhile, national mega projects contributed to reducing unemployment rate from 13.2% in 2013 to 7.2% in 2021. Over the past eight years, as many as 14,762 national projects have been completed at an estimated cost of 2.207 billion Egyptian pounds. Another 4,164 projects are still in progress at about 2.569 billion pounds. The launch of the mega projects is intended to be means of reviving of the economy and a drive for development. Welcome back and indeed the secrecy of the plans, the deceptive uh, actions and uh, all the announcement that were made and all that was implemented in one year, all before the uh, 1973, um, a year of intelligence and surveillance that demonstrated that there was no way, no way that the Egyptian armed forces are gearing for an upcoming war. But before that, uh, General Shahawi, there were other great moments, ones that led to such moments. Those are the attrition war. Yes, this is a very, very important stage in achieving this glorious victory, October War. We know that the goal of attrition war is to break the barriers of fear from the Israeli soldiers. So for that reason, the armed forces was organized and was uh, trained a lot. And also every brigade in the front of the second and the third uh, field, army field, they raid, they make two persons from each brigade to the other side of the uh, Barleaf line. They can swim on the Suez Canal 
and they can climb the, the bird. And after that, they can attack the Israeli soldiers in Berlin line, two only. Why? To break the barrier of fear from them, from that was happened of uh, uh, June, the war of uh, 1967. Hmm. I guess that started the next day of that very yes, particular they day. can take uh, positive actions hmm. along them. And when they succeeded in that mission, they increased the number so from each brigade to be a group. Group may be 10. And when they succeeded also, and to break the barrier of fears from the Israeli forces, they can send a platoon. Platoon, they may be 30. And after that company, this is a large levels uh, of unit. And after that, Ba 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 battalions, battalions yet it exceeds to more than 500 persons, combat persons. They can make a raid on the Israeli sites. This is give them uh, courage. They can raise their morality. They can fight that they can fight with Israeli. This is the goal of attrition war. Also, they can organize our forces. They can train a lot about how can we, we uh, confront all the Israeli and how can demolish their strong point, which was 31, 31st uh, uh, strong points in the Berlif line. And it was equipped with uh, many, many things about uh, wires and mines and also weapons, a lot of weapons. We train ourselves to how to attack, how to assault, how to defeat the Israeli armies. And this is the first step to train and then to make as a rehearsal and then after launching this, this growth to war. Indeed. Um, when we speak, of course, of the attrition war, we have to uh, mention many, many of the big operations that were made and, and, and have uh, led to big yes. losses to the enemy and then uh, if we speak about the crossing and there was this rule of the chemical warfare departments during the crossing or were that prepared for the crossing and we have never spoken about this very particular uh, uh, point before in, in, in before yes we didn't, we didn't discuss we this did not matter dis yes. until now. Yes. But because I am the former chief of staff of the Chemical Warfare Department, I'd like to mention and shed a light about the role and the missions of the chemical warfare mm. in October war. Mm. You know that the mission of Chemical Warfare Department is to prepare the armed forces to work under the usage of the Israeli mass destruction weapons. We know that Israel has chemical gases, nuclear, nuclear weapons, and also about biological agent. Mm. They have the three, the three agent, and we call this mass destruction weapons. Why? Because it killed the human, the plants, the anything, it, the animal. It destruct, it, it destruct life destruct. at large, yes. So the mission, of our department, chemical warfare Dark, is to prepare the armed forces how to work. If the Israeli used about the gases and about the biological agent, or, or even the uh, nuclear arms, how can we trade this? This is the mission of our armed forces. We supply all the armed forces, especially soldiers and non-commissioned officers, officers with what we call about masks. This mask, it has a filter, and if the enemy uses a gas, it can filtrate it. It can be safe when you uh, wear it, this mask, put on this mask. Mm. And we take a rehearsal, we take a competition between the soldiers to listen the times that you have to, to wear it, to put in. Why? Because 
the uh, the enemy uses the gases surprisingly. So we have to prepare yourself to wear this uh, mask imminently. In, in, immediately, in no time. In imminent, so, yes. so we can make a competition between them how to wear it in a time less than eight seconds. You can stop breathing mm. and can you close your eyes and then you can wear it so you will be in danger if you do these actions. This is the first one. And also we have a garment that all the soldiers, all the forces, they can wear it to protect them from the droplets or solutions of these gases. Mm -hmm. Also, we have participated in the destruction of the strong point in Berlin line by using what we call about a flamethrowers, flamethrowers to burn all the, all the materials that can burn. We use this, this by uh, chemical warfare department, and we have a martyrs that they uh, lost their lives in this occasion. Second, also, in addition to that, we blind the reconnaissance post and anti-tank guided missile, blind them by sending what we call about smoke rockets. And these rockets, it can give a smoke screen and he can't see for that for 15 minutes. In this time, we can assault him and we can defeat them. And also hiding bridges. Uh, you know that to cross the canals by tanks and by uh, heavy uh, vehicles, we have to erect and, uh, and uh, what we call about made uh, bridges. And these bridges, real and fake. So we can hide them with what we call about a smoke curtain because the Israeli pilots, he can uh, miss organizing the, uh, the real bridge. And this is some of the mm. rules of the chemical warfare department in October war. Imagine that we did all that under the strain of our very limited resources at, uh, at then. But we had the ability to prepare for all that. Um, yes, uh, the, the, this war is filled with many, many memories that we really need to recall. But this war had a result. And the result made us prepared for what we are living today. So let me take here, how do you view the results of this war and how do you view our second yeah. crossing today yes. or what we are living the in The result of the war, but let me say something about the uh, role of the, of the chemical war for the department mm. now, mm. this year, in coronavirus uh, epidemic. The chemical war for the department make a lot of, of things about to sterilize and disinfections of the coronavirus. We know a big vehicles that can make a vital uh, goals like uh, uh, schools and uh, universities, like mosques and what we call it churches. They make our precautionary measures uh, and they carrying out what we call about sterilization and disinfection work for vital facilities and for many, uh, many uh, objects. Mm. Uh, but when we go to the results of October war, we know that Egypt directed a heavy blow, a heavy strike for the Israeli armed forces. And also we demolish what we call about Israeli security theory and broke the long head for Israel that it was here Air Force. We broke it yes. by the wall of the rock. Also, one of the result of the war is a quick Israeli acceptance, acceptance of withdrawal to the middle of Sinai and opening the Suez Canal for the international navigation and uh, uh, President Sadat visited Israel in 1977 from a powerful position. So 
We started restore, the negotiation we, for restoring our yeah, lands in a yes. very powerful so position. Yes. We restore our land, we restore our dignity, and uh, except that there are a lot of martyrs, they shed their lives to restore this uh, holy land. Indeed. And to that, we salute our martyrs and then, and our martyrs of all sure. the battles that are ongoing at, up till this uh, minute. I guess that takes us to the end of this episode, despite that I really did not want to <laughs> end it here because we have lots and lots of story, but my time is limited. And uh, Major General Mohammed Shahawi, Chemical Warfare Advisor in the CSC, we thank you so much for being with us tonight and for your great input, of course. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to shed a light about the glorious October War. And also I said at the end that for our youth, we have we, uh, we have to be in uh, hope and, uh, what, and a will and a work to be in good conditions for everyone in Egypt. Indeed. It just uh, fills us with this spirit of patriotism and uh, these feelings. Uh, you know, people were at that moment were in very low spirit and then they saw suddenly a real victory. So I guess these moments, we really need to recall those days. And also at the end, I want to say the spirit of October war is continue with us until now in carrying out the national uh, project that we know that in seven years only, we constructed uh, 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 more than 30,000 uh, yes. uh, national project that costs uh, more than six trillion pounds. Indeed, indeed. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us uh, uh, and, and for your input here, Major General Mohammed Shahawi. And uh, I guess that takes us to the end of this episode and uh, more and more uh, glorious days to come in Egypt's history. Good night. <laughs>